Um, one of the things that I thought was fascinating in reading your book and your work was this idea that that um, the fasting mimicking diet uh, will have a will will make healthy cells more resistant to like if you have cancer, right? It will make those cancer cells more susceptible to the cancer treatments, to the chemotherapy and the healthier cells um, uh, strong so that they will be able to withstand those treatments. I didn't say that very eloquently. No, but. that's exactly right. Yeah. So yeah, then the, like we had observed for bacteria and yeast, uh, you take a normal cell, uh, at least in a mouse, and, and the early data from clinical studies is suggesting the same. We've shown already for white blood cells, for example, from humans, so if you give them chemo, the good cells know what to do mm -hmm. uh, during starvation. They become protected. They stop dividing or they r reduce growth rate and they enter a protective mode. The cancer cells, by definition, by the way, uh, rebel against this. They cannot. They, otherwise, they wouldn't be defined as a cancer cell. So one of the, the hallmarks of cancer cells is the ability uh, to grow independently of growth factor and to refuse anti-growth signals, right? So to rebel against anti-growth signals. So fasting is an anti-growth signal and the fasting and the cancer cell rebel. Now you got a problem with that. And I use the analogy of imagining somebody running in the desert, in the desert without shade, right? And without water. Uh, now, if you were running in the desert, like cancer cells do, um, you know, you have shade and water, uh, you may make it. Right? And so if you have, in the case of cancer cell, lots of growth factors, lots of proteins, amino acids, and sugar, fine. That's what they've evolved in. That's Continue what they understand. Mm -hmm. As soon as you start you know, uh, removing glucose and removing uh, growth factors and like IGF-1, et cetera, and adding anti-growth factors, now the cancer cells are going to have a problem. And that's what we see. That's why we see uh, the fasting, fasting making diet being as effective as chemo. But particularly, we see this working together, and that's where the sun comes in, right? The mm -hmm. sun is the chemo. And so, you know, you know, have no water and you have the sun hitting you, um, you're going to be dead. It's just a matter of time. Right. It's amazing how that's worked out, that it has the desired effect on the cancer cells, which is to hopefully make them go away, and at the same time, strengthening the healthy cells. It might have now worked out, it might be evolved, right? Mm -hmm. right? So we're starting to suspect that, think about sleep, right? So you, you sleep and, and sleep is now there by, by mistake, right? It is, it's, it's forcing you to rest for however, however many hours. So we're starting to think, is it possible that because all these organisms mostly stay yeast, bacteria, mostly they stay in a starvation mode. Once in a while, they start eating, right? Humans were not in that situation, but fasting was probably so common that you didn't have to force anybody to do it because they were forced by the condition, right? Mm -hmm. So then what if fasting was the moment where the precancerous cells were getting killed and, and, the, um, and now you use it to protect the other cells in that moment of starvation from the sun, from whatever other you know, uh, problems and toxins you might be exposed to. Um, so it may very well be an adapted process where uh, you're starving, protect your, your, your good cells, protect your genes, and then get rid of uh, cells that are, you know, not functional anymore. Also to eat 